Howdy peeps and welcome back to the channel for an exciting new video. Well I hope so anyway. This is a relatively new brand to the UK and I think they only came out back end of last year or only came into the UK the back end of last year. That's amusing hobby. Obviously Far Eastern. No. This amusing hobby is probably not the kind of name that a Western company would have taken, but hey, I'm not knocking them. Nice box art, and obviously the Panther 2, or the Panzer 2, as I call it. Because, you know, it's not Russian, so therefore it's not very good. Anyway, what do we get for this? Well, we get a nice, solid box. <laughs> And it says on the side, Colour Info and Profiles by Ammo of MIG. So we'll ignore those. And there's a bit of bump on it. But you don't want to see what's on the box. You want to see what's in the box, don't you? Yes, Sharpie. Yes, we're not interested in how pretty the box is. Even if you do want to keep the box art on the screen for long enough to get a decent thumbnail. Right. So let's start out with how it's packaged. That's grey plastic. Looks suspiciously like a dragon kit to me, if you ask. We'll start with the lower hull. Uh, we have a, yeah, a couple of poor stub marks or injection marks. We're looking at the bottom, we have some very nice weld details. And you're going to want to be a little closer, aren't you, so you can see what I'm looking at. Let me just zoom you in. We that'll do. Oop, move that across a bit. There we are. So, escape hatches and what have you. Nice well detail. Moving on to the sides. Not a huge amount of detail. We've got the various mounting points for everything. And again, some more nice welds on the rear plate. Top boys, not a lot to see, but you can see it's going to have the torsion bar suspension in it, which some like and others don't. I, I don't mind it, it's just a few extra parts to glue in. And same on the other side. And it's flat. Good start there. Anyway, moving on. Oh dear. I've got stuff all over the place here. So first bag of sprues we get to are the wheelie bits, which are all in the same bag together. Oh, it's going to sound a sound a stupid thing, but good, strong, robust bags as well. I know that sounds dumb, but hey, if the bags protect your parts properly. That's good, right? So, little pokey pointy device, so my big old paws don't, well, I've got little hands but we're zoomed in so they're going to look bigger, so they don't get in the way. And we have the steel road wheels with all the rivets and bolts. I can't com comment on their accuracy, as I'm no German armour expert, but they look good to me. Nicely moulded. Bunch of random little parts as we can see with the way they're mounted onto the sprues with the little ejects pin pads very dragon-esque more small parts hooks clevises clevis not crevice i know what you've got to like uh, the actual torsion bars themselves which don't look to be too tricky uh, they won't need much clean up is this, uh, as long as they go through the hole in the hull, you should be okay on those. Now flip it the right way up. Sprucey. And we've got the other side of the wheels. And you see good solid mounting points where they will lock together so you know they're in straight and true. And it looks to me like any rivet and bolt type detail is there and... Nice. As I say, I can't comment on the accuracy, just on whether I think it looks good or not, and I think it looks good. 
And we don't appear to have much in the way of flash, if any. Well, I don't, I can't see any at all. And I will be putting these back in their bags because I'm not likely to be getting around to this too rapidly, he says. Probably start it tomorrow now. Um, and the next, again, two sprues in the bag, but they're identical. It's the sprockets and a few other little bits and pieces. Ooh. Uh, not sure if that's a short shot or that one looks a bit melted. Um, no, the other one looks the same, so maybe it's supposed to be like that. But again, um, nice, crisp, cleanly moulded parts. <coughs> Mm. It looks in a couple of places like the plastic was maybe still a bit warm when it came out of the mould. But that's the really high parts, so uh, I don't know. Um, it probably won't make any difference at all when building it. Because that's probably just where it plugs into the uh, final drive. But again, it all looks clean, crisp. Yeah, crisp enough. Now well moulded. Again, something I do pick out on tank models. The sprue gates are on the end of the gear teeth. Which is so much nicer and so much easier sorting out when the sprue gates are in between them. Because they can be an absolute cow to sort out. So again, looking at the back. Although it's not going to be an issue on any of these parts I don't think. No nasty ejector pins, so yeah, we're all looking good so far. As I said, I don't know how long Amusing Hobby have been around in the Far East, Japan or China or Korea or wherever they come from. I haven't actually researched it. I just saw the kit in the shop and thought, ah, cool. But, you know, I think they're a relatively new company. They're certainly relatively new to the UK market. Um, cut the bag on the cutting board sharp and it might actually cut through right this one is a bit more impressive we, well size wise anyway we have the upper hole rear plate engine deck parts filters fans Exhausty type bits and again a bunch of other little bits. I have no idea what they are Because they're German So looking at the upper hole Now we have a nice Rolled steel texture. Well, there's some texture on there whether it's rolled steel or not. I couldn't tell It's not as rough as cast so I'm gonna go with rolled Anyway, it's not completely smooth it does have texture to it and again we have the same nice, very nice actual weld seams in where they sh I think they should be. There is a little bit of flash around a couple of the engine deck louvers but that's not going to be too big of an issue to trim that out with a knife. And a little bit of flash around the inside of the turret ring but again Easy enough to clean up. On to the other side, on the larger parts, you see we have various intakes and fans, and, and the little fans quite nicely moulded. Um, you, you actually do have holes between the blades at the ends, anyway. So yeah, that's good. Uh, hatches, various little greebly parts that. I really don't know what they are. Oh, oh! I can identify a grab handle. <laughs> they, yeah, there's a little, yeah, there's a bit of a flashy mould seam on them, but again, nothing that won't be too hard to clean up. And yeah, it's generally nicely moulded parts. And the exhausts are slide moulded. So we've got open tips on those, which is always nice to see. So just having to try and drill them out and slip. And again, we'll look at 
back of the sprue quickly. We do have ejector pin marks, but this is the interior side and the thing doesn't have an interior. Honking great ejector stubs on the upper hull though. <laughs> They're huge. Let me just see if I snip one of those off. You can see. Let's get to it. Hopefully we don't go straight through the upper hole. If I can actually chop it. That's a lump of plastic and a half. Again, whether they will actually need chopping off. No, whether it will go together without removing them. It probably will. That's not a problem. Ah, they are actually on the back of some of these parts as well. On the fan covers. So some of them probably will need removing. But... It's not a huge, huge issue. It shouldn't be too difficult to sort out. Uh, you don't have to get completely cleaned up and neat and tidy and perfect. You've just got to get it so it fits together. Next up we have a rather dinky sprue in a rather large bag. That's good because that will be nice and easy to get back in. And this is mainly, it looks like the... Uh, Pioneer tools and the stuff that goes on the exterior of the tank. So again we have more clevises, the uh, tow rope ends, again slide moulded so they're open. Tools are looking uh, tool like. It does appear to be very slight sink marks in the head of the hammer and the axe, but you know. I was looking, I think that's a fire extinguisher, the uh, uh, bolt cutters look quite nice, the rest of the finer parts look quite fine. And I'm guessing that's a tube for barrel cleaning rods or aerials or something like that, we've got the starter handle, jack block. Again, yeah, there's no wood texture on the jack block at all, but that's not usually too too bad of an issue. We can easily put that back in with a razor saw if we feel the need to. So we'll pop again, pop that back in its bag. And yes, I'm making a neat pile over here in the order they come out so I can get them back into the box again. Next we have the turret sprue. Which is where some of the interesting things will probably happen. I'm going to try not to slice through any of my stickers. shroud is bent over but I guess it's supposed to be on the sprue so we start here we do have a fairly subtle casting texture on the gun shroud the mantle itself has the, the rolled steel or the turret front sorry and that's the mantle I guess more lifting hooks gun cradle a base of the barrel the bit that goes inside the turret and lets you move it up and down, whatever that's called. Squeak! We have some slider moulded barrels, a longer one with, well, not really a muzzle brake, but eh, and a shorter one. Let's have a look, it might be rifled. Mm, don't look it, no. And again, more roundy roundy bits, which I'm guessing are for different gun options. Some hatches, top plate, commander's cupola, either another front plate or back plate. And that one is the back plate, I'm fairly certain. The escape hatch, turret base, turret top, another gun cradle, a little chainy bit for the top of the gun cradle to hold it in, which is quite nicely done. It's not the most subtly detailed of parts, but uh, it looks kind of like it should do. And the turret top, again like the rest of the main hull and whatever, it's got the weld seams. 
and it's got some nice torch cut marks as well along the thicker sections of armour. I'm guessing roughly where they should have been in real life. I don't know if the camera is going to pick those up. Just along these sections here and across the very top at the front. It's, it's there, it's nice textures to have. Again, so I was trying to put it in. And the ejector stubs are better on here, and we've still got some fairly honking, chunky ones that are going to need snipping off and removing. Same on the back plate if you're on the interior of the turret, but there isn't an interior, so again, they just need a quick chop and that'll be fine. It's not as if anything on the inside is going to be visible. Now I'm going to go out of order here because I want to put those to one side and the final sprue which I don't even think is German um, <laughs> that to me looks suspiciously like a Russian gun mantlet uh, sprue A you know, it, it does look more like something off of an SU-122 or an SU-85 Russian self-propelled gun. A bit small to be off an SU-152, although the barrel is fairly sizable. So quite what we need off of this sprue, I have no idea. Hopefully they've got it right and it's not the wrong sprue. I will just check in the manual. See what it says about sprue A. Is that slightly concerning if it no? No, that's the part that's in there, right, that's okay. So, going back to it, not entirely sure what we'll be using off here, because as I say, a lot of it does look rather Russian. As I say, it's definitely a Russian gun mantlet. Um, so whether it's just some of the smaller detail parts we'd need off of here, I'm not entirely sure. Right, so we've got a jack, uh, Gun mount, another mantlet, various random other parts, unless, unless, fender, fender fronts, because I think that is actually the track jig. Yeah, it is. That could be the main reason we got this sprue, just for the track jig. As I say, that is definitely Russian. I think that probably is as well. Look at the size, it looks like a 122. So whether they're recycling parts from one kit into another, I don't know. But I guess fenders are pretty much fenders. Um, we shall see when we get to building it how little or much of this sprue we use. I don't think there'll be a lot. Unless there is a version of it that does have a honking grate. Uh, what would it be? Would it be a Yag Panther? Possibly if they do a Yag Panther as well. That would be the mantlet for that. So it's basically the same kit. Just with a different upper hull I'd have thought. Anyway, enough rambling about that. Because I've confused myself now. As you can see again we've got similar levels of detail on all these parts. So we've got some nice little fiddly bits again. The stowage boxes. As I say, everything looks you know solid. No, solidly moulded. It's not quite got the crispness of say a dragon kit. But you know, it's up there and they're considerably cheaper than an, an, an equivalent dragon kit these days, so you know it's uh one of those things. As I say, the parts do look nice. There's a little bit of wispy flash in places, and again, we're probably going to find some of those honking great ejector stubs. No, we're okay on this sprue. This one, the fenders has snapped off the sprue there. So I'll be careful popping this back in the bag so we don't lose that. Well, that wouldn't be the end of the world to model a German tank without a fender on it. Some people would probably get upset if you modelled it with both on. So, 
can pop that back in there for safety. Is that at the moment? Yeah. Um, so should be an interesting build. Then we get to these screws. The tracks. Now. This is going to be the point where probably 90% of the people who are thinking about buying this kit go, yeah, no, or yeah, maybe, but I'll definitely buy frill tracks for it. <laughs> because we do have multi-part links. I think it's about three or four parts per link. We'll see when we get to the instructions. And again, I can't comment on the accuracy. These are supposed to be workable, but I'm Yes, and if you get a little bit heavy handed with the glue they're not going to be and probably if you don't put quite enough glue on them they're going to fall apart <laughs> but as I say yeah they look quite nicely detailed and that's not yet definitely good enough for this old boy good enough for government work anyway and we shall see how well they go together when we come to build it but yeah, some very fine delicate stuff there. There's going to be quite a lot of clean up I think on most of these. But hey, it's one of those things, stick either a ISM Live, live at the Bench show on if you haven't watched one. Or something else you enjoy watching or listening to. And just sit there and zen out and clean up the track parts. We get a piece of copper cable for the tow rope, which is always nicer than the horrible dragon steel ones that just never do what you want them to do. Softer, more flexible, pliable, stays where you put it. We get two small sheets of decals. Just Balkan Kreutzes and numbers. Um, yeah, I'd say they look in register, even through the backing film, or the paper that's over the top of them. Oh, I'm not going to bother to get them out. It's an armour kit. Who really worries about the decals on an armour kit, to be honest? As long as they go on, you just cover them with mud afterwards anyway. Then we come to the photo etch, in which we get quite a bit. I'll pop those to one side. And it feels rot, very thin, and it is. I'm getting a feeling much like the um, Tiger model kits. Look and feel like building a Tamiya kit. The instructions are almost the same. The fit, the parts, everything. It all just seems Tamiya esque. Like if Tamiya just put photo etch in their kits. This has got a lot of dragon about it. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing as long as the instructions aren't like dragons. But anyway, as you can see, we've got the various grills for the engine deck. Whether I'm guessing they're not supposed to be curved, but we'll soon glue those down, that's not a problem. And some various other small parts. I'll pop them in the bottom of the box that way down so any weight on them pushes them back straight again. And we get which I'm guessing are probably fender supports and bolt heads. And yeah, that's about what I, what I reckon those are. They're probably the fender supports. So any extra detail on that side? Sorry, not the fenders, the uh, side skirts, bazooka plates, whatever you want to call them. So we've got those. And we also get, I'm going to put that in there that way up, so if it does, it straightens itself out again. And the individual, let's go with shirts and shall we, the side plates. Again in brass and all individual, and they are very thin. And this one's you know, a little bit bent, but you know. Soon straighten out when they glue down. So let's have a quick looky through the instructions. 
actually before we get to that painting and marking guide so we have full colour it's a bit glossy so it's glaring off of the light and we've got one this is everything you know, by MIG so we've got MIG colour call outs I'll, actually I'll zoom you back out now let's go to about there so we've got one in a beige and brown one in the tritonal standard sort of German camo one in the tritonal with the ambush dots on it and one in a strange two-tone is that Dunkelgelb and Rosada or Rosetta Grun, whatever. So yellow and green. Um, uh, I shall see what I feel like doing when I get to it. I'm not going to make any decisions yet. And the instruction. Instruction. If there's only one, I get worried. Thank you for purchasing an amusing hobby model kit. General legend icons. Blah blah blah. It says apparently a hairdryer is useful for quick hardening. Strange. Um, might have to try that. Uh, <laughs> sprue call out. Nothing crossed out, but you know, I'm guessing we're not going to be using all of those parts as there's several gun barrels there. And as usual, tanks starting off with the lower hull, and I would say. At the moment, at least, it all looks very clear and concise. Line drawings it shows you where the things go and how they go together. All the wheels going on. The sprockets and idlers. The back plate going together with the exhaust on. The two, I guess, it's stowage boxes and the jack going down the middle. Back plate going on, then we're on to the upper hull, track links, spares, you know, whatevers and tools and everything sticking to the sides of them. And the vents and grills for the rear deck, MG going in. Guessing that's some kind of vision port. More etch going on, hatches, plates, grab handles, and then we're on to the turret. As you see, nothing's getting too busy or anything as we're going. It's going to be interesting gluing etch to plastic and then plastic to etch, and then etch to the plastic. There could be quite a lot of super glue involved there. And with the turret on the starting on the back plate, which apparently has an openable hatch, I'm not entirely sure why. There's nothing in there. And then, as usual, turrets just top and bottom go together. The cupola goes on, then the gun goes on. Or oh, we have an op option for a different gun. Uh, whether that's a longer barrel or a bigger caliber, I'm not sure. And then the tracks go together, and this is about the only bit of the, that I think is possibly a little confusing. I'll grab my pokey thing again. So in the jig we have the various bottom parts go in, then there's another part goes on top, and then a tiny little part, and then it all gets sandwiched by the actual cleaty tready bits. So they could be interesting. And I think the final step is just popping the fenders on, which are the ones on sprue A. The shirts and, and then the tow cables. And it says to make them 20 millimeters long, which I'm guessing is not going to be long enough. I think they probably mean 200. Um, two of those and then back page put your turret on and put the gun cradle on job done so it doesn't look too tricky from the instructions 
and other than the tracks the rest of it looks fairly self-explanatory as well so I shall let you know when I get round to building it how it actually you know how it actually goes together what I really think so it's uh, it's always nice to try out a new new company's models well, they might be really good or they might be a pile of poop. You never really can tell. Um, but yes, and so I'm looking forward to giving this a go and seeing what I think. Hopefully you've enjoyed seeing what there is there. Oh, I must admit I took a bit, a bit of a pump on it because there don't appear to be many reviews of or anything on YouTube especially in English about amusing hobby kits so thank you very much for watching enjoy your modeling be good peace out rock on have fun and bye bye